of the past two years. And I really like just hanging out with my friends all the time and being super involved in school events and everything else. So yeah, that's just a little bit about me and I'm really excited to take on this course. A few hours ago, that video was posted on the Remembering Zanna Carnoodle Facebook page along with this message. Today marks one year since Zanna, Ethan, Maddie, and Kaylee left the world, and I'm at a loss for words. I don't know how or what to say, how to feel the whole year that they are gone. So many questions, so no answers, so much pain, sadness. We miss them all so much. Let's bring in a special guest this hour, the attorney representing the family of Kayla Gonzalez, Shannon Gray. Shannon, um, first of all, uh, good evening. Let's start with the family. This is a one-year marker. Uh, I, I, Steve Gonzalez told our channel, Peter, he doesn't, this isn't an a anniversary. It's something that you, uh, they must be thinking, but this is by no means some sort of uh, time to... Um, uh, you know, it is not a celebration. It's not an anniversary in the in that type of meant. So how are they handling today and what are they doing? Are they going to the vigil uh, in Moscow or um, just staying together as a family? What can you share? Yeah, well, well I think we just wanted to call it a Remembrance Day rather than yeah. some sort of anniversary. It, it's less about an anniversary and more about just remembering the victims of this uh, tragic crime. You know, the families hunkering down at home, uh, you know, hugging and loving on each other and, and taking care of each other. Um, you know, plan to be out and we're not going to be going to the Idaho event that I think is happening tonight. So, Okay, fair enough. Then. And that's why I asked. I thought maybe that was the case. The, how does the, uh, the gag order affect you and the family? In, in a typical case, you know, prosecutors and victim family members are very close, a lot of communication, especially during the crucial time leading up to trial. Um, how does the gag order change that sort of dynamic, or does it? Well, I mean, it, you know, from the get-go in this investigation, we were critical of the investigation. We were just trying to hold people accountable. Um, you know, if we thought there was something that was going wrong or there's something that should have been said, you know, having meetings with the, the prosecution and things like that. And um, from the beginning, it really has never been a, a very good line of communication. And so, you, uh, you know, you get involved in it and you hope that there's a better line of communication that develops throughout the process, but it hasn't been so. Um, you know, we've, uh, I, I think that, you know, the idea that victims' families have a voice and should have a voice um, is something that's important uh, to all victims of crimes. And that, you know, the Gonzalez family has done a wonderful job of doing that. Uh, putting the word out, you know, I feel, you know, saving the, the Idaho house, um, you know, getting there, uh, the university was making plans to de demolish the house. Uh, the families always thought it was a massive piece of evidence uh, in this case. And, you know, we voiced our concern of uh, us and some of the other families as well. And now it's not being demolished, uh, which is important um, because a few weeks ago they sent some more investigators back in there to gather some additional information. And so, you know, it's important for victims' families to have voices. And um, and in this case, they've kept it so quiet on all fronts that we don't get any information that the public does. Uh, we're, we get the same thing that you get um, when they make a statement or a release of information. They might give us a heads up of a few hours or maybe the day before, but, um, you know, the non-dissemination order uh, precludes me from commenting about anything on the case uh, since I'm the attorney involved and I'm governed by a lot of things. I'm governed by rules of professional conduct uh, regarding trial publicity, things like that. But the, the non-dissemination order really uh, puts a hamper on what uh, I can say in regards to any evidence or anything that's going on with the case. Um, but the family is, is open to comment on those things. So. The house, the, so is that um, for sure that it's not going to be touched? Because we all thought once the FBI was back doing some imaging that there was a chance that uh, they were doing that um, for a reason. And, and at the end of the day, they may use that instead of a jury view. But is that now determined this will stay uh, until trial, uh, until the trial's over? I mean, that's our understanding. I mean, I've, you know, when we were pushing to not have it, um, uh, demolished. It was we were waiting until trial. So the mere fact that the FBI came in and 
did some additional investigation. Uh, it's great for the investigation, but I don't think that changes the uh, circumstances surrounding the demolition of the house. Um, the University of Idaho has not notified us that they will be de demoing that house anytime soon. And, and, and we understand, I think all the families understand that that house will be up until this trial is over with. And if they want to try to demo it, we're gonna, we're gonna do our best to stop them again, so. So many people have watched this uh, unfold from the time hearing of the murders and then the investigation and the arrest. The Gonzalez family, they, they've said publicly um, this at the time, a bunch of times, and Steve, you know, they did the uh, paying it forward for Kaylee's birthday, going around and thanking local businesses. For the families, give us a sense of what kind of outpouring they have been recipients of and, and, um, and to what degree has it um, helped uh, or, or, or has it, I guess, I mean, they have to, uh, the, they're dealing with something we can just not even get our heads around. Well, I think in these situations, it's a little bit of a double-edged sword. You know, you get an enormous amount of support and effort from a lot of people, and then you get a lot of criticism. You know, when you get out in the media and you start speaking uh, your your truth and you start saying the things that you think are important uh, to the investigation or important to the case itself, you're going to have a lot of people that just say, hey, shut up, you know, go back, you know, take your role as a victim, which never really makes understand. I don't I never really understand that uh, the idea that you become a victim of a crime and then you're just supposed to be silent about everything um, and then trust that everything is going to be going according to plans. Um, and it's hard when you don't have the best line of communication with the prosecution to know what is going on um, with the case. And so it might be a different, you know, uh, they might be in a different boat if there was a, if we knew exactly what was going on with the investigation, all the things that were concerned, uh, how they were moving forward, all this evidence that they have, things like that uh, might be different, but it's not the, in this case. So they put themselves out there to keep this story in front of everyone in, the, in, in America and in the, in the media because, you know, the media wants the next best thing. And, you know, you may have something uh, that's important to you, but it fades with the media. And so if, if you don't keep on it and keep the voice out there for the victims uh, in this case, you know, Kaylee and, and Zana and Maddie and Ethan, uh, then and you want to hear their names over and over again. Uh, then it's important to do that. So, absolutely. When um, there's no trial date here, how difficult was it for them when he waived time and they pushed it into the another world of, of sometime next year? And how are you to helping them through this process? Because victim families don't realize the slow wheels of justice. How how truly sh slow they can be. Well, I think we suspected that from the get-go. We suspected that he would be waiving his speedy trial rights. So it wasn't a huge surprise to us. Um, uh, you know, when you waive your speedy trial rights, you know, you're, you're, for lack of a better term sometimes, and, and I'm a criminal defense attorney. I was a former prosecutor myself. You know, when someone wants to have a speedy trial, sometimes they're playing a little bit of chicken uh, with the prosecution because uh, they want to see what you have and, and how fast you can get it done. But, yeah, you get all that evidence as a defense attorney, but then you have to really present and, and organize the case yourself. And that's hard to do in a short time frame. Uh, you want to get everything organized because you're only going to get one bite of the apple. So it was something we suspected. We were just, they were disappointed, obviously, that it didn't go at that time frame. I think right now the family is more disappointed that there's not a current trial date set um, on this case. You know, it's a year out and you know, um, I think that's something that that gives them, you know, when you have a trial date, you have something to look forward to. You have a place, a time and place where justice can be served, uh, where you can plan for things, where there might be a resolution date where you can say, hey, after this date, we can kind of move on with our lives to a certain degree as much as you can. But when you don't have anything like that and it's still just kind of out in the out in the wind, um, until some of these motions and things get resolved, it's it's difficult for the families. Mm, I bet it is. Uh, Shannon Gray represents the Gonzalez family. Our thoughts are with the Gonzalez's and the other victim families on this date. Um, and we won't call it an anniversary as well. It'll be a day of remembering Shannon Gray. Thank you so much for your time.